Hi, my name is Greg Hammerly from Baylor University, and I'm going to talk about problem A, balanced diet. Uh, this problem was uh, the seventh problem in the contest to be finished today, to be solved today, and uh, the first solution came after 43 minutes. So in this problem, uh, we have a boy, a little boy Danny, who likes to eat sweets. And in particular, he likes to eat M types of sweets. And we're told, well, you have, he wants to choose among these M types of sweets. Um, and being a fastidious boy, he wants to maintain that there is some sort of balance in his diet. And this balance is accounted for with uh, a desired frequency of each, type, each of these types of sweets. So for each of the M types of candies or sweets, um, there's a desired frequency with which he will eat those sweets. And he eats a sweet once a day. He eats one type of sweet each day. Um, along with these desired frequencies, so uh, there are also a, there's also a history of sweets that he has already eaten that we are given, and uh, so we don't have to know the whole history in particular. But what we do want to keep track of is for each type of sweet, uh, the number of that sweet that he has already eaten. So for type one, we keep we keep a sum of um, the number of uh, sweet one types that he has already eaten, and uh, and so on. So this notion of balance is maintained in this, in, in this constraint. And the constraint is expressed as for each sweet type, um, there is the desired frequency times the number of sweets already eaten. So n is the sum of all the sweets uh, that have been consumed already. So f times n, fi times n minus 1 must lower bound si, the number of sweets of type i that have been eaten. And it must be upper bounded by f times n plus 1. For each type of sweet, he must maintain this balance every single day, always buying just one type of sweet. Um, and so that's our goal. Well, if we take this constraint, we can divide it into sort of two parts, um, the lower and the upper part. And we know that before Danny chooses, if Danny chooses to pick sweet SI on a given day, that before he has chosen that sweet, if he has already chosen N sweets in total, balance is already maintained, and that means that f times n minus 1 is less than s. And after he chooses a sweet, uh, in particular sweet si, the number of sweets that he has chosen of this type goes up by 1, and uh, the total number of sweets goes up by 1, and this must be maintained. Uh, so this being the upper part of the, the constraint. If we take these two, we can think about these as predicting times at which Danny uh, may eat a sweet. In other words, if he, uh, we, we can turn these into lower and upper bounds on the times at which he may uh, eat this particular sweet. So for each sweet, we can turn these two constraints into lower and upper bounds, a range of times that um, may overlap with the current time, but may be forward in time and possibly backward in time um, if we were out of balance. Um, and those lower and upper bounds for each suite tell us when we may, pick, or when Danny may pick up that type of suite and eat it and still maintain balance. Okay, so um, there are base, these intervals, if, if, if balance is maintained, then these intervals fall into two types. Those for which the lower bound is at or below the current time, meaning that he can eat this type of suite, and those for which the lower bound is beyond the current time, meaning that he cannot yet pick up that type of suite without um, violating uh, uh, this constraint, the upper constraint. So this suggests that we can use two priority cues. It also suggests that we have a scheduling algorithm. The scheduling algorithm is uh, that we can uh, order these intervals um, in these two cues uh, in two ways. For those suites which are not yet available, which he cannot yet eat at the current time, we're going to order those sweets by increasing lower bound. So we'll identify as quickly as possible when the, when the current time reaches that lower bound and that suite becomes available. For those sweets which are currently available, we'll put those in a priority queue with uh, ordered by upper bound uh, with, again, increasing upper bound so that we always want to choose the suite whose upper bound is coming up first. Um, because if we don't do that, the scheduling, uh, a scheduling algorithm would always do that because if we don't do that um, and we choose something that has an upper bound that, that's later, we could achieve better performance 
um, and extend our streak longer by choosing the one that, that ends earlier. Um, again, the goal is to do this, to pick suites as long as possible. So uh, if we continue, so, so the algorithm is, that su this suggests is that we always take the one suite uh, with the lowest upper bound from the available suites, consume it, create a new interval for that suite, and then put that interval either into, the, into either of the priority queues depending on its status. Um, and we do that until such time as we can't do it anymore. When can we not do that anymore? Well, we cannot do that anymore when there are at least two suites whose upper bounds are uh, both equal to the current time. In other words, we have to eat both suites at the same time in order to maintain balance. And if that happens, then we can't, uh, we can't move forward. And that's the answer to our, to our problem. That's how long we can go, uh, go on eating sweets. There is the possibility, of course, that Danny could go on eating sweets forever. And that uh, we can identify when we know that we have eaten enough sweets that essentially, uh, if we think about these frequencies as uh, the integers as they're given in the problem, which are proportional to these, um, if we go on and on and on until the number of sweets that we've picked up and eaten is a multiple of the relative frequencies of these input integers, um, then we know that we could follow whatever strategy it was that we took to get us there um, over and over and over again. And so we can um, do that forever. So then the answer would be forever or infinite. Um, so the bounds on this problem, the number of suites that we can have is I believe 10 to the fifth. And um, so, uh, and the bounds on the frequency, uh, the integers representing the relative frequencies are also 10 to the fifth in sum. So we have to simulate this at most uh, 10,000 steps. And um, at that point, we can get our answer. And the simulation, you know, inserting and removing from a priority queue is going to take uh, n log n, uh, where n is this 10 to the, 10 to the fifth. Um, and so that's about it.